Okay, so we're going to create a uh, samurai um, plaque. So we're going to go step by step through this. So um, when you start Carve Co Maker, you get the 3D view here. I'm going to treat it like a piece of paper and switch to the 2D view. There is other settings as well that you can use. So you can tile these. So they are horizontal um, and, and vertical. So there's the vertical, there's the horizontal, um, but actually we want the tab view. So in the 3D view, you can rotate. To rotate, I'm actually holding down my middle mouse key, which is a scroll wheel in my case, and you can scroll in and out, or you have click over to the 2D view, okay. I'm going to import an image and turn it into a vector. So I'm going to select with my left mouse button this down arrow. And you can see we have a layer there. I'm going to right click on that layer and I will import. So I'm going to import this samurai image here. Now to make sure it fills up the whole screen, I'm going to go to fit. So it will fit my 200 by 200 model because its original pixel size is 5,000 by 5,000. So it's significantly bigger. So when I select OK on that or open on that, you can see it's filled it to the best it can within the model. Now, the next thing to do is to turn this into vectors. Now, this looks like it was some sort of painting effect or a paintbrush, whether it was done manually or whether it was done within software or something like Photoshop. But I'm going to try and convert this into a series of vectors. At the moment, this is just a image. So to turn that into vectors, I'm going to go to vector, bitmap to vector, that's using my left mouse button to select, and I'm going to reduce the colors, left mouse button on that one to select that. Okay, so it's reduced it from 255 colors to 32 colors as standard. Now, if I drag this slider bar down, it will adjust down to a limited palette. If we zoom in, we can see my palette. that There's four colors, black, white, gray, and red. If I go down one more, the gray has disappeared and kept the red. One more, it should turn everything black. So I'm going to left click, click and apply on that. And if I select create vectors, this should have turned it into a series of vector lines around the black. Now to check this, I can left click on my visibility and you'll see we have a series of vectors. Now there is a lot of small vectors within here, which will be terrible to machine. So you can fix that. I'm going control Z and just backwards. And I'm going to reduce the colors again, uh, all the way back down to my two colors. But I'm going to change my speckle size to let's say 10 and hit Create. Now we should see that we have actually selected less of those dots than we previously had. Turn it back on. Okay, you can see that all these dots around here, which are the speckles, we haven't actually selected. Now I can undo that where there's no vectors, and I can make that bigger if I want. So I could say 20 and create and you can see that there's less there than there were previously now this is going to be quite interesting to machine but we are going to have an attempt at it so first thing to do which could be very bad is to use the vector doctor to check if there's any open vectors so there is no open vectors 
we'll select it again okay we we'll see if there's any duplicates no duplicates okay now we're going to select them and identify any problems okay we'll do a bit of maths work out if there are any issues and there are not the next thing we're going to do is take a look at just scaling this down I'm going to just delete the outer boundary so one thing to note here is it created an outer boundary so I'm going to delete that I'm actually going to scale this down okay sorry selected all of my shapes and I press the T key button T the letter T on the keyboard if I hold an arrow down and I can scale these by dragging there if I hold the alt key down it will scale it about the center so if I pop that round about there okay we can see we've got our design now I could go through and clear some of these out me to clear out this is quite a complex design so you typically would go through and clear out any unwanted notches um, from this the paintbrush would have given you that effect itself um, I mean especially when they're so close things like this you can go through and clear up the vectors okay let's just shoot through these uh, ones that are lying out but you typically go through and clean up your design now I'm not going to do this too much um, what we're going to look at is creating a vector around it so I'm going to hover over to the create circles button and left click roughly in the center I'm going to just draw a circle out roughly to where I think okay and then hit create and cancel okay now I'm going to center this in the design. You can center this using the F9 key, or you can go to Vector, Align, Center in Model, and it will also center the design. So next we're going to take a look at machining, but you can see I've got a bit of a problem here. So my circle either A needs to be bigger, and I can do that by selecting it, pressing the letter T, Hovering over the arrow and alt and scaling it up. Or if I wanted to, I could incorporate that circle in the more complex part of my design. So I'm going to select all of my vectors. And I'm going to take a look at machining this now. So if I hold the shift key down, um, it will deselect a individual item. And I'm going to look at machining this. Now I think this is probably perfect for an area clearance. So I'm going to use the toolpath in option, left click on the mouse button, and select my area clearance. Now I've got some large areas and some small areas. I'm only going to cut this as a finished depth of um, three millimeters. Okay, depth, and I am going to um, select my tools. So in Kafka Maker, you have a tool database. Uh, I'm going to start with a large six millimeter tool, and I'm going to go down to a two millimeter tool, and then I'm going to use some like a half mil n millimeter tool. Now, what Kafka Maker will do is it will use the biggest tool where it can, and then it will work its way down. Each tool has step over, step down, feed rates, and so forth. They are quite safe figures. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it. You have the ability to do a raster strategy. So that's just going all the way across or an offset strategy. So this kind of works its way out. Okay. And you can add ramping moves. I mentioned this quite a few times on different posts. Uh, ramping is absolutely fantastic for um, longevity of your tools as well. So your tool is basically zigzagging down it's going down um not going straight down driving down into your tool into your uh, material next i set up my material so i have a 12 millimeter 
and making sure that these slider bars are to the top. Okay, so the material position is at the top of the block. And then I'm simply going to calculate. Now what that will do is it will start with my six millimeter, then my two millimeter, and then my half millimeter tool, and it will do an area clearance in there. So we'll see where we get to. So that was our two millimeter. And we'll see if it's actually done what we want it to do. Now, if it hasn't, we can go back in with a much smaller tool and I'd suggest a conical tool for this. But to see if this works, let's go to our 3D view. Let's rotate it. Right click on toolpaths and simulate all of my toolpaths. Okay. Sometimes with complex vectors, this can look quite rubbish. So a trick is to go to simulation with the left click of the button and put depth color, apply, but then select black. So now you can see, if I go to the front view here, what my design will look like when machined. So I can see it, it actually looks quite good for what we're after using those tools. And if I come back to the 2D view, I can see that my six mil is definitely needed. Um, and so is my smaller tool. Now it doesn't appear to have missed anything at all on my design. So I'm quite happy with that. Maybe just this, this end here, maybe a couple of other bits. Now you can do that with a smaller tool, but I don't think it's taken away from my design itself. It still looks absolutely great. Um, and there's various different things you can do with a design like this. You can do like a milliput um, fill to go in it. You can do a resin fill, or you can leave it just as it is. At the moment, it's on a square block. And let's just say, for example, it's a square bit of wood. So let's change our material to a bit of wood. And it's on a really nice square bit of wood. But I want to cut this out. That's why I created this circle. Now, typically to cut a piece of material out, you would use a different toolpath, such as a profiling tool. And you would say whether you want it to go outside of the vector, inside of the vector, or along it. You have different options here. I won't go into these into too much detail as this is quite a basic video. You can set it to your finished depth. So typically a cutout pass would be to the complete depth of your material. Um, but if you're not going to cut it out, then you don't have to. I'm going to select my tool. It's usually beneficial to use a tool that you've already been using in your job. So I'm using a six millimeter tool. Now there's different ways you'll hear about clamping down material. If you use the sticky tape and glue method, which is on your bed, you put down some sticky tape, you put down some sticky tape on the back of your material and some glue, you don't have to worry so much about um, using bridges. They're called bridges or tabs, but if you're using a clamping method, then I would suggest using bridges because it stops the piece moving around. There are some tricks if you move up to bigger machines where actually if you use a compression tool for cutting out, you don't need to use either because it will keep it relatively still. Now the types of bridges we're going to do, I'm going to make these four millimeters by four millimeters and I'm just going to add them. So it's added one there, one there, and it's probably going to have had one there and one there. Now I'd like to show you what those look like. You can adjust all of these manually and I've just picked a random figure. So what it's done is pick, put in four millimeter length and four millimeter height. If I now calculate this and simulate this toolpath by right clicking and simulating the toolpath, okay, you will see these tabs will hold my material in place. So they'll be of a width of four millimeters and a height of four millimeters. So they will show it exactly as it is. So this is how you would cut a design out like this. Now to make sure this is perfectly safe, what you need to do 
is make sure that you have a piece of waste material under this so it doesn't cut into your bed itself. So typically a sacrificial board um, that a lot of people like to level to make sure it's perfectly flat. And that's how you create a simple design from a image within Carco Maker. If you would like to machine this and actually output this, you go to your toolpaths by left clicking and you select save toolpaths. And then you would pick, if you have a tool changer, you can set all of them. If not, I just selected this button down here. You would say, I'm going to use my end mill area clearance first. And you would save that out to whatever you want it to be. So in this case, it would be on my D drive and I would call this um, Samurai. So that will save it in that folder. We'll create a folder and I can browse and I can say, okay, six millimeter end mill, because that's the tool I'm using. And then I can pick my machine. So uh, as we talk about a lot of the same smart machines in this channel, um, we can go all the way down to Sane Smart, and we can say I have a 3080 improver and I did it in millimeters. I can now save that and send that back across. My next tool was the two millimeter. I can now save that, making sure I change the name. I can send that back across and then I pick my half millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to change that. Then the final one I'm going to actually is my profile. So I'm going to change that to six millimeter cut out. Because what I don't want to get confused is a cut out and an area clearance. So I'm going to save that as well. Now the next thing to be would be to put this on a machine itself. So to do this, you would open it in your choice of controller software. The controller software I use is what comes with uh, machines like the 3018 or the 4030, which is Candle. So in Candle, if I go to open, okay, I can go to my Samurai, and in Candle, I can open my six millimeter end mill tool and that will show me the toolpath for this job itself. And then I can just simply set up my machine as you would with Candle, and then just send it directly to the machine. I would then use my next toolpath, which is my two millimeter toolpath. Then I would use my half millimeter toolpath and then finally I would use my six millimeter cutout pass which will cut the job out for me and that's how you do a design within Carco Maker and send it to your machine within Candle.